All right, welcome to the KX Country Clubhouse. And today our special guest is Madeline Merlot. Welcome to the show, Madeline. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good. We're freezing our, our buns <laughs> off up here in Canada. You're down in Nashville. You got a lot of things happening. How's the weather today in Nashville? Um, it, it's pretty sunny, which is yeah. nice. It is a little cold though. It's like, yeah. it's pretty chilly, but it's not dark, which I'll take cold over dark any day. That's for No sure. kidding. Where do we start? You've got so much happening. Let's go back to the number one hit three weeks in a row, Champagne Night for Lady Antebellum. I, I had to go back and watch the video from Songland just you know, to reacquaint myself with it because at the time it was almost unbelievable. And then when I watched the video, looking at you, you look like you're almost, you can't believe what's happening. Just incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that a three week number one came out of that is truly crazy. I can't quite like really wrap my head around it. You know, even getting on the show was this like really weird thing, the way that it happened. And, um, you know, I had just, thought wow like I get a chance to play on tv like I get to sing in, at on NBC like that's what my thought was I was not expecting to win like at all and so for me it was like this opportunity to get myself in front of a big audience and 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 sing and so um that all of this came from that is truly crazy um a, a dream come true I get to drive up Music Row and see a banner of my face on the row, just like when I was 17 and I came here for the first time with my mom. Like, it's crazy, truly. Now, I think I know the answer to this question, but but I'll let you answer it. Uh, was there a moment that it, it hit you that, oh my gosh, I actually think they're going to pick me and going to choose this song? I think it's when you raised your hand to your face. Is that close to that time? Yeah, yeah you know I felt really good about everything, you know, I felt with the initial, um, you know, uh, performance of the original song, but we weren't able to see the other people. And so I walked away from everything I did feeling great about it, but I was like, I don't know these other songs. I don't know how well the other people are doing and stuff. So um, yeah, so I, I didn't really know until they, they announced me as the winner, to be honest. So that reaction is very genuine. I was very shocked. How do you deal with nerves or do you get nervous? Some artists just go up and let it, let it fly. Uh, how about you? Um, I definitely feel nervous. That's a part of, of my kind of thing. You know, I have a kind of a thing that I do to calm myself down and et cetera. But for, for me, it's like, what a great moment. I felt this way with the Shania Twain tribute as well. Like, I don't want to waste this moment being so nervous and you don't perform well when you're nervous and you like, I like black out like I don't remember anything and I was like I don't want that to be this so right. you got this you've earned this you've been playing for your whole life you can do this like I try to really like pump myself up in the mirror before I walk out there for sure well just an FYI I talked to Charles Kelly not too long after that interviewed him and he said yeah you nailed it he knew right away they knew right away they said this is a hit and they even said that on the show so I mean you can just tell a hit what did you learn from that process that you took away from there now in your own you know process of doing all that yeah um i mean i just got to work with shane who is you know one of my songwriting heroes he's been a part of a lot of my favorite stuff ever yeah. so um i learned a lot from him the bar is just so high for him when it comes to melody and lyric and i think that he'd say a line and i'd be like oh my gosh it's so good he'd be like no i can beat that we can beat that we can do it better and so i think that working with him and and since the show I've been able to write with more of my you know songwriting heroes um you know their bar is really really high the quality has to be great every loose end has to be tied up it's a beautiful thing about country music is we're storytellers and everything from the it has to rhyme you know the syllables have to be right and the emotion has to be right and so they fight really hard to make it perfect and amazing and so i feel like my bar was just taken to a new level um through that well period. that's that's now a bar that you have to get up and over every time now um did the deal with uh by the way new deal hello in nashville congratulations did was that a, as a result do you think of the show it, it certainly doesn't hurt or was that in the works kind of all along the way you know, um, I actually, so I did a showcase uh, for a few labels at the end of 2019. And I had one label almost sign me. I was so close and it didn't happen. And I was so disappointed. I was really, really 
Like I did everything I could have done. I thought, I thought the show went great and it didn't work out. And I was really, I'm um, discouraged. And then this whole show happened. And then every label after that show wanted to meet with me. And so it was this really cool moment where you just have to trust in, in it, you know, trust in the plan, trust in, in the journey, because in that moment I was so, like I said, discouraged. And then little did I know, you know, a year later, what would have come out of it. Um, and thank God that, that, that didn't work out. Cause maybe I wouldn't have been able to go on the show, et cetera. So, um, right. yeah. And I know that, you know, as most artists do and ones that are successful, like yourself, you have a plan, you try to execute the plan, stick yeah. to it, keep going. Even if you hear the nose, you keep going, keep going. Mm -hmm. Has this panned out quicker than you had imagined or at the same pace, or did you have any expectations as a timeline goes? Um, I mean, with some things I wanted, an, like when I moved to Nashville, I was like, I'm moving here to, to, you know, be a better songwriter. And I want an American record deal. That's what I moved here for. It's what I wanted. And so um, at the beginning of 2020, I was like, oh, I need to make this happen. Like this is, I'm going to make this happen this year. I was really, really like thinking about that a lot. Um, so when, when I did end up signing the deal this year, I was really felt like relieved and very proud of myself that I did make it happen. Um, and so I think I, but definitely not the number one song. Like I surely was not expecting that to happen and didn't put that type of timeline pressure on myself. But um, I mean, none of anything would have happened without that show um, in that speed. You know, I do believe that I would have got a number one eventually, but not in that amount of time. That's for sure. Let's talk about the international aspect of country music, especially in Nashville. Uh, when I've, I've been doing country music for a long time, uh, gosh, 28 years, maybe 27. Um, and I've seen a huge change when it comes to the acceptance of outside artists, uh, not only, you know, uh, especially women, but when it comes to international artists such as yourself, uh, maybe talk a little bit about the acceptance level. Have you noticed a difference since you started going even in the last five years? I mean, things have really are changing there quickly. Do you, do you agree? I think so. I think that, I mean, I think in general, the world is becoming more accepting of everything and that, you know, not every single country singer has to come from the South and that there is, cause it used to be like that. I've heard people say back in the day, if, you know, someone came from New York or one of the Northern states and they came to Nashville, people would be like, what do you know about country music? You're from Michigan, like stuff like that. So I think that in general, it's just expanded. And I think as Canadians, I mean, there's a lot of Canadians doing really well in the States currently. And I think that Canada has been so great to give us the, the tools that we need to come down here. I feel like I came into Nashville as a new artist, but I was not, you know, I was prepared. I was seasoned. I had worked really hard. I had dealt with big shows and high pressure situations. And it, it was, you know, I feel like I was given this incredible, like learned a lot of lessons and stuff. So I think that now um, the perception is like, they know what they're doing. Like it's proven to work up there. So it should work down here too. So it's almost like, um, I think it, the tables have kind of turned in that way. Right. And, and of course now with your success, um, you start looking forward because you can't rest on your laurels uh, in really in any business, but especially the music business. Um, what is in the works for you for the next three months, six months. And, and, you know, we want to get back on stage obviously too, right? Yeah. I, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to playing shows that will be, will be huge. Um, it's been such a huge chunk of my heart, not quite in place. So that definitely, but right now, um, you know, just writing a bunch and we're going to cut new music um, with my new team um, in a few months and then, and, and put it out. And, and I have this whole American team, you know, going to be behind it. So I'm so excited to see, you know, what it can do and how it can grow. And, um, but yeah, so right now we're still kind of in the creative spot. I want to make sure that this record is right. And that, um, you know, every single thing is in line and it, it's, it, it's really, um, you know, very Madeline, like it really represents who I am and what I'm trying to do. Cause this is my introductory album to, to this market. So there's a lot of pressure, but I'm really yeah. excited. Well, and you've got to find some time for yourself too. I'm sure. Um, a couple of questions. First of all, what do you do in your spare time? I know you, you like horseback riding. I do. Yeah. I love horses. Um, I will just be outside. Like that's my, my dream Saturday. I'm like, let's go on a hike let's get brunch maybe after like that's kind of my vibe I I feel like finding moments of peace and like when you can disconnect are really helpful to me um because I do feel like I'm like going a mile a minute all during the week so 
Sure. I love that. I love to paint. Um, I love yoga. I love animals. Um, with my friends, like drinking wine with my girlfriends is just like all that kind of stuff. Just chill. I just want to hang out. I, mean, I love it. Um, well, there's lots of time to chill with this pandemic that's going on. It's craziness. <laughs> um, what about um, binge watching? What are you, are you binge watching any shows? Oh man. Um, well, I just finished Bridgerton, which was great. Um, I love that. I've been rewatching Sex in the City. Oh, yeah. um, on, I got HBO Max. Um, I finished The Undoing, which is so good. I feel like I jump all over. I like, you know, kind of dark crime type of stuff. And then I'll watch something super fluffy right after and like jump all over the place. But yeah, I definitely have have watched a few shows this year. That's for sure. <laughs> As we all have. Well, that's changed, that's changed the process too for, for in the music business. Uh, first of all, with, with live performances, it's harder to do now, obviously. Um, have you changed anything with with the pandemic? I mean, does it change the way you approach uh, making music and, and, and writing and recording? That's a great question. I think that we've just had to adapt so much with the way that we're creating it and recording it. And people are still, you know, making records, but people distanced and recording yep. in separate places and bring it together. So I think there's like a my whole learning curve but I think that I could speak for live performers um in like it's it's hard to be on the road like you're away from your families and it's it's difficult but not being on the road like this experience has just showed me how much I love it and how grateful I am to do it and how important it is to who I am and so I think that sometimes you can be like oh I just want to stay home this weekend and now I'm like I can't wait to go and so I think that was a, a big a big wake up for a lot of people. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, we've just had to adapt like everybody else and do things a little bit different, but. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the songs, well, your latest song, it didn't. Um, yeah. I, I want to congratulate you on the use of horns in that song. I'm a big fan of horns, seventies <laughs> pop, that kind of thing, you know, early eighties, Lady A has used that in their, in their music as well. Um, that that's just a brilliant choice to put that in there. I just wanted to congratulate you on that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, when I wrote the song, it felt like this, you know, the song is a celebration. It's getting through something hard, getting on the other side of something hard, whatever it is. And the horns felt like a celebration. It felt like a party about it. And so it was important for me to service the song the way I had like created it in my head. And even though the piano isn't like typical or like the um, like the way that it sounds sonically isn't super country or super on the nose of, of what some people are doing, but um, and it pushes a genre a little bit, but for me, like I said, I just wanted to do the song justice and do it how I imagined it and have it feel like this huge kind of party. So um, thank you for saying that. I, I oh yeah, that. great stuff. All of it. Well, I've always been a fan of your stuff. And I also am a fan of your philanthropy, uh, your, your charity work that you do. Um, charities have been hurt everywhere. We, we are noticing that here. As a matter of fact, the one you did for us, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of uh, North Durham, you were up there a few years ago. Uh, we were able to do it this year up from a distance of driving. They still managed to raise the money, but you know, maybe talk about uh, uh, some of your charity work. Do you still plan on doing that uh, when you know when we get back to this? Yeah, I mean, I think that that is something that is important to me, and I have you know a few things that are really close to my heart. Um, mental health is a huge thing. You know, that's always been something um, that I've wanted to like. One day, I would love to have my own facility where people can have access to mental health care. I feel like it's so hard to find. Um, and so that's something that I'm always trying to work with, um, whether it's conversations or actual physical money in people's hands, like trying to promote that kind of cause. And I've been working with a company called Four Ocean, which is all about ocean conservation and cleaning up the oceans. And so that's something I'm super passionate about. Um, we did a, a live stream show for like the food bank this year as well, too. Like it's, it's, you know, fundamental things like people are struggling to feed their families. So um, it's been definitely a hard time going through this year and having everybody spending less on everything. And so I think if you can, you know, you got to kind of look out for your neighbor in this moment more than ever. Well said. Do you look at yourself as being a role model for up and coming, uh, not only country uh, singers, but also just for people in general. Yeah, I think that, you know, you step into those shoes anytime that you're given a platform and um, that's, there comes pressure with that about not doing everything the right way or accidentally saying something, whatever. But I think that being kind is a great 
a great thing to have to live up to, you know? So in everything, if I just want to, you know, be, be kind to everyone and, and preach love and acceptance for everyone. And that's like the main thing. Like I will take that, that role model flag and wave it everywhere. Like we need to be nicer to each other. We need to be kinder. Like that's just a true thing. So, um, I think if that's what I can spread and, and talk about recycling now and then, and maybe somebody does it because they saw me talk about it in my stories or promote brands and that are ethical and, um, you know, cruelty-free makeup products, like all that kind of stuff, things that I'm passionate about, if it can lead people in that direction, I think that's great. Well, Bono from U2 said the world needs more Canada. And in my opinion, we need more Madeline Merlot. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, you're welcome. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, and thanks for joining us in the KX Country Clubhouse. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me.